Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm DJ Av of Trap Camp ENT, and today we're going to be talking more about Falcon, which is a VST synth made by UVI, and like all of its basic features and stuff like that, just getting started in making stuff. But you know, there was a few questions and whatnot because there's a lot of people that it was like, I don't know if this is worth the price tag, which it is going right now for 350. It the introduction price was. 299 I believe and then it came with a voucher and yeah I gotta uh, just kind of <laughs> gotta tune in and you know sign up for UVI's newsletter because they do drop vouchers every so now and then that will you know and do sales unlike a lot of VST companies but more, more or less this is going to be basics and stuff about synthesis and just getting started so w this is basically how you the UVI's Falcon opens up you know this is how it looks when it opens up and let's go ahead and dive into that a little further so we have what you when you first open it up it looks like this and one of my main things was when I first started I was like how in the world do you even get started and you, it's funny because you got to start a key group and there's many ways you could do that you can actually go into the tree here and you know kind of slide it in there into the uh, the key group but the easiest way i find uh, is not going through this but just going and picking something from right here which it, you know it'll, it'll be default like this you know but you can just go into this thing which probably represents the waveforms or the different oscillators that you have <clears throat> available so you know i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna select the wavetable and i'm gonna drop it in the key group and once you uh, drop it into the key group, you know, and if I press on other keys, you notice there's no sound. And, you know, that could throw you off, but all you have to do is kind of extend this key group. And the reason why it's like that is to, you know, kind of, <clears throat> kind of get you into like mapping your keys and whatnot. So, and there's other ways if you right click on it, you, there's this, which is very, extensive but you don't necessarily need to do it but you can actually add layers to your key group and go from there which i'm not going to do that right now but you can actually you know split key, uh, key groups and you know drive an, you know add another waveform in there if if needed or oscillator so we have that in there you know i don't necessarily need that but i do want to point out this if you do have because for the like of me, I was like playing it, like real soft. You got to make sure that your velo uh, that you have this all the way down because this represents the velocity. You guys can see the velocity number going from 1 to 127, representing the, the mini velocity levels. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move a little forward here. And now we have a wavetable sim that's in front of us. And funny enough, you know, a lot of people was wondering, like, it's like, how, how, so how so could it be better than Serum? Uh, if you, if you, you know, per se, to say that you like this more than Serum, like I do. This is why. You have two, you only have two oscillators in uh, Serum, but, you know, you can go as far as making three, four, five oh well okay nope yeah you can five or even more so that's pretty awesome there but we're just for the for the sake of this video we're just gonna do one uh well actually we're gonna do more than one but going into it or whatnot you actually you know you can once again you can browse through, through your device and find different waveforms even the ones that you have in serum and actually drag and drop them in here or if you have them in here uh, somewhere around about you can drop uh, drag your waveform in there <clears throat> now but here's the kicker here because I know a lot of people are going to be wondering this as well about this particular synth now does it does it base yes it actually it actually bases very well we have growls like they have growl templates in there and you know you could work through different wave indexes 
So with that being said, how would you set that? You can set it by doing this right here, by adding a modulation. And then you just go and you select a modulation that you want. Which, you know, we're just gonna, for the sake of this video, we're gonna pick a LFO. There's many more. I also saw in another video where a guy was talking about you can't stop the cycle or whatever. Yes, you can. And go from there. And you know, you select bipolar again. Another another thing that people might wonder, and let me go ahead and turn on the volume, so I apologize guys for that. I guess I can make it a little louder. But another thing that, that a lot of people was wondering was how how on the earth do you make it to where it is on time with the tempo? This this little signal, this little uh, icon here is a metronome, which represents the BPM. So, you know, it's at 130 by default. If you're in FL Studio, usually it's 120 in other DAWs. So if I go down, there you go. So that's the proof in the cup there. But let me show, let me show you something a little bit more extravagant than that. Another thing, I'm just going to pull up another wave table. This, you can do it this way by pressing the plus sign once you already have a waveform in there. Or obviously, you can just go and drag and drop in here, whatever fits your bill. So I'm going to go and select, well, I have growl one. So I'm going to select a different growl. You know, drop, hit the down arrow there. And we're going to go to basis. And if you want to turn off, if you don't want to hear all of it, and you just want to hear your bass when you just that power button. But now we have three in here. And say you want to assign uh, LFO to that same window. Uh, you can actually assign the same one or assign that same one there. Oops. I'm gonna sign it right here. So now, now that we have that, I just want to just go and point out one of the cool, cooler things about this. Uh, <clears throat> if you're not working now in FL Studio, you can actually do this in, in particular, which is kind of like a round robin type thing, which is kind of like an MPC 2000 type thing or whatever. If you're used to any other thing that does round robin, you can actually do that in here and you know, you can either cycle and you can cycle through uh, the two at random so they're not always playing the same way but obviously I would need to add another waveform so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to go select Q growl and I'm going to add that same LFO and I'm going to actually turn it on so if you was doing like <clears throat> I don't know if people still do complex draw or not but you know it, there's more different forms of music where that can be useful but every single time you press a key it'll through there It'll, it'll play like the different oscillator that you have selected. So that is actually awesome. I don't know if any other dogs can do it, but I know FL Studio can do it um, via, you know, a channel or whatever. But to be able to do that within that actual VST and then not really hit your CPU. As you see, the CPU isn't all that lar at, uh, large right now, which, you know, per se, you it, it really wouldn't be. Uh, because of the fact that what I haven't uh, added effects. So how you add effects? So I'm just gonna go 
per se, I, I want to add a reverb. I'm going to use something simple. Use the fusion. And, you know, you can actually select, you know, well, certain ones you can. You can select what type of reverbs. Now, uh, the more, the more, vo the thing that, that really does add much CPU is the fact that if you pile on the voices, you know, detune. As you can see, the, the CPU is a little higher, but another thing that I wanted to point out is that the fact that you have other effects that you can put in here and and by large they are <laughs> in freaking credible um, one of the main things <clears throat> if once again we're in the, the effects tab you know you have info uh, info edit and then effects so <clears throat> now once you start adding effects that's that's another thing that hits the cpu now spark verb for the for the most part is probably one of the heavier ones that you can use in this instance and you know i want to just do final countdown and let's look at the CPU as I play that. Oops. As you see, it's going up a little bit. And you know, if you want to add more, per se, I want to go drive and distortion. <clears throat> there are some pretty, some awesome distortion features in here. You have UVI drive. I think it's cool. The wave shaper is really cool. You know, if you want to be more uh, traditional, you have this wave shaper here. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go asymmetrical. You know, kind of like an analog-ish type thing. <laughs> And if I turn it off, this is how it sounds. Turn it on. And you can affect the input gain. The input gain will, once again, it'll add more. The way distortion at, uh, does works is that it adds extra harmonics to the fundamental tone. So, as you can see. And, and then, you know, per se, you just want to just, you want your distortion before the spark verb, you know, you would just reorder it. Yeah, I'm going to get off that. <laughs> you know, it's just that, it's just that simple. Now, just going into one more thing <clears throat> to make this, just to kind of like cap, cap this off, make this night, night cap a little gracious or whatever and oh by the way you can add specific things specific like modulation to whatever you want you know <clears throat> for the love of me i'm just gonna go ahead and i'll do i'll do this hmm <laughs> i'm trying to no, nah, I'm not gonna do new drunk. I haven't messed with new drunk. Oh, I can, and you know, one of the main things you might say is I can't see it. <clears throat> now you could actually affect it by doing this right here, and you know, edit modulation, and then now you have your modulation right in front of you. So that was one of my concerns as far as this big interface, and you know, edit it. <laughs> That's pretty not, that's not my cup of tea, but you know. But that's basically about it. I just wanted to, to walk it out there real quick. And oh, the final thing is what what would you do uh, as far as saving <clears throat> saving your programs? Because I was like, man, how am I gonna save this? I wanna save my patches. Well, you go right here to this tool, uh this tool right here, this wrench, I believe, and just go it either save as multis or save program as <clears throat> and I'm just gonna say program as mm, you know 
and then you just save it wherever you save it wherever you want for the most part you know i would i probably would make a folder dedicated to it and just name it or whatever and you know that's that's basically about it but yeah that's that's it for the first video here as far as basics and i'll, I'll be back with another basics video <clears throat> and we'll get more in tune with it so yeah this is kind of just an introduction but yeah thank you so if you like this video give it a like if you have any questions please ask a question and don't forget to subscribe i'm dj Ad mccree and i am out